Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week, here on In-Depth Outdoors. Oh, yes, big walleye, super taker. <laughs> big fish. Oh my goodness, bad monster, monster pocket. <laughs> We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Got him. All right. That's what smallmouth fishing is all about right there. This is In-Depth Outdoors. For everyone that's been watching our show for the last 13 weeks, you're going to notice that today's episode looks completely different. We're not walking on water, we're boating on it. Uh, we've made the switch in our season from ice fishing to open water. Uh, we're going to be fishing with Chris Gronrud on the Rainy River. That's the river that feeds Lake of the Woods right there on the border between Minnesota and Canada. And what's really special about this bite is this is just one of those fisheries that year after year kicks out huge numbers of big pre-spawn walleyes and anybody can do it. This is not one of those patterns that takes a very refined technique to put fish in the boat. In fact, handful of jigs, handful of plastics and just keep your attentions focused in shallow water and you're going to put a ton of big fish in the boat. Now the way I figure it, for all you guys that have been out there hibernating your way through the winter, uh, now is the time to really start getting ready, making preparations to get that boat out there on the water. The way I figure it, you got about five, maybe six weeks before this bite really starts to kick into high gear. By that third week of March, in most years, you're going to be able to launch a boat out here on the Rainy River. And as soon as you're able to get a boat on the water, the fish are going to be waiting. So get that boat out of storage, get the line on the rods and reels, it's time to go. So with that said, here it is, Big Walleyes on Rainy River. Oh, this is a tank. Oh, I love that feeling. <laughs> we had some rain overnight, and you know when the water dirties up like this, uh, it's actually even uh, a better time to be fishing these bright, big plastics. Uh, guys will get out in the deep water, water clarity has really dropped. So what ends up happening is these walleyes have a hard time finding those baits. And of course, we, we're fishing shallow, you're going to have more light penetration. And because we have a bigger bait, that's really brightly colored, it actually kind of is like a one-two punch. We are so lucky to have a fishery like this, this close to us. Oh my Look at goodness. This thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. She's got that pulsar just inhaled. Get okay. out there, okay, Chris. Flip her in. Get out there. <laughs> I don't want a chance catching that. That's a 30-inch fish. Come oh, on. Yes. Oh god. <laughs> That's a net flexor. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome fish. I love this place. I dream about this all winter long. I get to go to some great destinations ice fishing. But as soon as that ice sheet is gone, I get to get out here in a boat on open water. This is it. This is king for me. You know, we're fishing those pulsars, and that's that new swim bait from Bee Fish and Tackle. And what they do so well is provide a lot of action at slow speeds. I'm putting my fingers in harm's way here. Thank you. There you go. They just absolutely eat them up. So I got that great big thumper tail there on the body. Just a superb amount of action in the water at slow speeds. And that's the result. First fish, 2012, here on Rainy River. It wasn't my first cast, but it was awful close. I'm gonna give her the queen's treatment here. Get her in the water, off she goes. <laughs> you know, 10 minutes in to a beautiful day, early April like this, to get a fish like that right away, that just bodes well for the rest of the day. Mr. Grandrud, the landing net job there, appreciate it. Awesome fish, man. I guarantee awesome you, fish. I will return the favor. <laughs> I'll net whatever you bring to the boat. <laughs> We had that rain yesterday. I mean, it wasn't a torrential downpour, but this, this body of water, this river is known for, you get a little precipitation and up comes the levels, the current, and of course it gets dirty real easy. I'm sure the water clarity has dropped, which means these fish are gonna push right tight to the bank, get in shallow water so they can see. Oh! Looks like she's a bass back there. <laughs> get him on a hula popper? <laughs> yeah, we're using hula poppers. <laughs> 
If you could get that fish out of my way, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm just gonna come back and grab her myself here. Well, if you're gonna come back here, <laughs> now you're making me feel guilty and stuff. Come on, sweetheart. All right, another nice fish. Oh, boy, they're just devouring, just devouring that pulsar. You know when they get in the boat and they still don't want to let it go, they must really like it. <laughs> She's good or good. You know, James, when you're catching 20 inch fish and they really look small and nobody's, nobody's getting excited. <laughs> you're bringing our average down, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fun. Well, oh, action. <laughs> Cute fish. <laughs> oh, you can say it. And that's another one for me. It's another one for the good guy. <laughs> That one actually caught me by surprise. It, it bounced off two rocks, tip, tip, and then pow. This is a good fish. That's awesome. People, I'm telling you, if you want to learn how to pitch jigs, this is the place to do it. And at the end of the line, at every hit, you got a shot at an eight, 10, 11, 12 pound fish. There's so many fish in a small area here. If you've really been planning on adding this technique to your arsenal, April. Rainy River could quite possibly be the best training ground for a jig fisherman ever. Here comes your extreme net, man. <laughs> oh, nice fish. I don't remember getting a choice. <laughs> oh, look at that. oh, did you see him pop off right there? Well, he just maybe slid right to the front. He just slid, yep. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, nice fish. <laughs> oh, it's good to be James. That is a dandy fish. Pulsar right in the snoot, not hooked deep at all. And you know what's great? Water temperatures are, are real low. We're in about uh, 40 degree water temperatures and we're getting these fish out of about six foot of water. So releasing these fish to go back to finish a spawn, absolutely no question about their health and condition. That was pass number one. We did all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good first quarter. <laughs> of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Bee Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow, producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeeFishandTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. This just in. Search now over for one suspect found hiding under a brush pile. Suspect was taken into custody and released this afternoon. Officials credit the apprehension to the new Markham underwater camera technology, which found and caught the suspect. Markham has really taken the lead with their on-screen displays for temperature, depth, and direction, helping you get to the fish quicker. In other news, a missing walleye was captured today, once again caught red-handed on a Markham camera. Stay tuned for more news from the Markham Underwater Network, where we seek, find, and capture the lake's most wanted. There he is. A big fish. <laughs> That's a crisscross hook set right there. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> Not sure if I'm over or under. You're over me. <laughs> We're coming up together. <laughs> How many hands you got back there? That's about as big as I want to lift right there. <laughs> I think I'll grab mine here. That was fun. I think those are about kissing cousins. I think so. Bye, sweetheart. Two at a time. Mine was one of the more bizarre strikes I've had. I mean, it just literally just took, <laughs> grabbed it, swam off that shallow flat. When the fish are up real shallow like this, it's kind of an odd feeling when a fish hits because he's up shallow and he kind of comes flying off that shallow shelf, grabs it and goes down deep. So you'll feel kind of like an initial tick and then you have to reel to catch up with them because those fish aren't staying up on that shallow, you know, sand ledge after they hit so it did you know it takes a little bit of uh you know dexterity you got to real real fast catch up to them then drive the hook home you know we're fishing out of uh skeeters mx 1825 today it's a fairly new uh platform for skeeter boats it's a multi-species boat i can talk and catch fish at the same time it's a fairly new platform and there's two features about this boat that really make this type of fishing very easy. The sides of the boat aren't real high above the water and that's important because when you get a crosswind like we have today, if your boat sits very high off the water, you're going to get pushed around and you're going to be off course. It just makes it more work. 
Now the second thing about this MX1825 that really makes this type of fishing easy is the keel. Skeeter calls it their react keel. It's a very pronounced keel that starts right at the bow and runs all the way to the back of the boat and it cuts through the water. So when you aim this boat at something, that pronounced keel makes it very difficult for the wind to push or shove this boat off course. So those two things, those two features, lower sides and a very pronounced keel make this MX1825 an absolutely ideal boat for this type of presentation. And if you find yourself out here and you're struggling, it might be just the basic design of the boat you're fishing out of. So uh, take a look at this new MX1825. There's some really cool features about it that make fishing just a lot easier. There oh. <laughs> I still had it on back reel from the last fish. Where's the saltwater chair? <laughs> quick, quick, strap me in. <laughs> Tip for the folks at home. Uh, remember to take the reel off back reel between casts. <laughs> this is just indicative of what starts to happen. You know, experienced anglers out here making rookie mistakes because the fish are just coming fast. Uh, I can't think of any way better to spend a spring day. I mean, I could be home like raking leaves or something, I suppose. Well, close, that close would, second. That would probably rank right up there. You know what, Chris? I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling lucky. I'm gonna hand land this You're one. You're gonna hand land that one Yes, too. I am, and I'm gonna <laughs> hand land it just to the left of that motor. Come here, sweetheart. Whoop, that's right. Come to daddy. Look at that. I got a line wrapped around my head and <laughs> <laughs> over my ears. I don't care. <laughs> what a fish. You know, we're, we're doing fish here every couple minutes, maybe even quicker than that. We hit these little pods moving along these shorelines. I got to show you this. Bring a really good pliers, long handle preferred. You're going to have to go in there and get them. We're throwing 3 8 ounce heads, and I want to talk about that as soon as I get this fish unhooked. Swing her over. Beautiful fish. I can't get enough of those. Let's talk about that jig head here real quick. Oh, no. Chris has got one. I'm finishing my point. So we're fishing a 3 8 ounce jig head in shallow water. And you've got to be asking yourself, why are they fishing so heavy? Uh, the water's cold and these fish are fairly lethargic. They're not chasing baits. I mean, if you were to pull a crankbait through here, they're not going to hit it. Um, but what that 3 8 ounce jig does is allows us great control and to fish this bait very slowly, slower than current speed. When we've uh, tried uh, lighter jigs, I mean, I could fish a 1 8 through a 3 16 ounce jig here easily, but what happens is that bait drifts at current speed and it's moving too fast for the fish. So don't always fall into the trap of trying to go as light as possible. In this case, in cold water, fishing a heavier head makes all the difference. And what can I do for you, sir? I've got a little rhubarb on top of this giant wall. <laughs> it was killing me when you're talking. <laughs> you're like, sh you're like, shorten, shorten, shorten. <laughs> Working them around it. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is not an anomaly. Uh, every time I fish with Chris, every time I come to the Rainy River this time of year, it's like this. It's one fish after another, after another, oh. and very often they're the biggest fish of the year. Can I help you with that, sir? Ah, uh, sure. You, well, you, you're getting so I'm, good at I'm, it. I'm nice that way. <laughs> Your hands are dry. I, we got to change that. Scoop and lift. Oh. There you go. How are you doing? Just in the skin of the mouth there. Just goes to show, even though they're slamming it, just, I mean, there's a little bit of slack. Can have these fish going somewhere else. Well, plus I was gabbing too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill him. You had a tough time being quiet. <laughs> did you hear the drag spinning in the background? I didn't. <laughs> I was tuning you out. <laughs> oh, gosh. I should have known something was up because it's pretty rare for you not to talk for like 45 <laughs> seconds at a crack, so that should have been my cue right there. <laughs> you didn't hear the hello in the background. <laughs> and I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to that fish, so. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, we've only got like uh, 13 more hours of this. Starting to feel loose now. Can you be okay, you be okay old man? It's loosening up a little bit. It's not good news for the big fat walleyes. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. 
At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. I want you to be the first two fish. <laughs> yeah. That's. <laughs> I'm going to get out of your I'm, way. I'm going spot lock. Doink. Just so I can get the one behind it. <laughs> I caught the fish and dropped the anchor. <laughs> this is amazing. It's never been easier. Now what I'm throwing here, I got a 3 8 ounce precision jig. We've talked about the Pulsar. And then this is 832. It's a suffix braid. Uh, what I love about this stuff, it's very smooth. Of course, almost no stretch to it. So fish breathes on that jig, I feel it. And when I set the hook home, I'm telling you, because there's no stretch, your hookup percentage is just amazing. Holy That's a lot of mouth Hannah. right there. Look at this. Look at that thing. Hello. Oh, it's my birthday. <laughs> nice fish. I'm going in. That's an upper 20. Nice Appreciate fish, it. Man. Thanks, man. What a dandy. Just eaten up those pulsars. Here's that bait. You fell for it, sweetheart. One of many that did. Gonna let her go. Drop her right over the side here. I mean, what a fat fish. Absolute, just riot. You're all right to fish with too, by the way. <laughs> Let's think of the same thing about you. Actually, I like it when you're landing fish, like you're right back in your honey hole back there. But the honey, your honey hole seems to be pretty spread out. Kind of more where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. Right on that front little face of where that hard bottom is along the shoreline. I mean, this is stuff that you can just look, see. Once you know what to look for, there's just so much information just by checking out the shorelines. What kind of topography do you have? You know, when you've got a real steep shoreline, chances are you're going to have deeper water there. Uh, real shallow, gradual taper, you know, farmland kind of stuff up and away from the uh, uh, river's bank. Probably going to be a slow taper going out into the river channel. Just little tiny little things like that save so much time locating these fish. These fish are fairly spread out. There's lots of places you can catch them. The elite caliber fish in big numbers are a little more isolated. <laughs> That's always the case. There is a lot of river. There's a lot of river. That was one of those hits that I mean, your body kind of remembers it. That just that jolt, that jar. Yeah. There he is. Oh, kind of like that. Just like that. <laughs> did, did you remember it? <laughs> How can you forget it? It's every other cast. Chris, I'm going to be laying in bed tonight. I'm going to go, ah! <laughs> don't, no, don't. That fish was so shallow. When I set the hook, it wasn't two shakes of the tail. She was right up at the surface. That isn't exactly the way to relax your arms either. No. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, if you wanted to catch eater fish, just go out, find those deeper holes in the river, bounce a jig and minnow through it, you're gonna catch all the fish you want for dinner. These bigger fish, think shallow. Get up against these shorelines, find the current breaks. Buddy, it's game on. Look at this thing. Oh, there he is. Did we just <laughs> <Yes>. double? <laughs> I was yep. uh, mesmerized by your fish coming up there. I have, just I have, I have that effect on people. Honestly, I was coming for you. I was coming. <laughs> I don't blame him. Do you guys? He was not coming to help me. <laughs> How big's yours? It's pretty good. All right. I'm going to let mine go. If you need a hand, I'm there for you, unlike <laughs> what you were doing. I think you can see you in the background. <laughs> one's in, one's out. See? <laughs> It's like they passed each other and said, hey, what are you doing up here? <laughs> Remember the Bugs Bunny uh, yeah. cartoon? Morning, Ed. Morning, Ralph. <laughs> That's right. This will be Martha, I think. That's all I got. You got to do better. <laughs> Jump for him. I don't want to be that guy that touches no, the line. No, don't be that guy. You know, I, I'm being that guy by not having the net ready for you, but I see where she's hooked. She's not going anywhere. <sighs> not bad. Not bad. You know? How about that? Could you quick unhook her? I'd like to make another cast. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut the commercial so I can knock him around a little bit. <laughs> How fun was that? Oh, man. 
of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Be Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow, producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishandTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Oh, sweetheart come here oh that's the easy way to do it right there no need to put them in a net there's just something about picking up a walleye like that they just go to sleep now it doesn't last very long a guy's got about 20 seconds where they'll just kind of hold still when you grab them by the belly like that pop the hook out right back in the water it's almost like she's been in a trance I don't know what it is but try it it works really really well <laughs> You try to grab that same fish from behind the gill covers, they just go nuts. But that, that belly lift, must be something comforting about it. <laughs> oh, doggy! <laughs> yeah, whoa, that was just about the samurai hook set. You can't do the samurai hook set. Come on, <laughs> there's no way. I actually have to support my wrist here. <laughs> Literally getting sore. I think it's a good one. He did that hesitation pause down in the bottom there. Like, did that? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I think I'm staying right here. My sleeve's almost dry. I can probably <laughs> scoop one for you here. You go, go in for me? Yep. I'm like the guy at second base about to turn two. <laughs> I'll bring him right into home here. This is the, the, the less serious side of in-depth outdoors. <laughs> You've kind of got one of the cooler looking natural presentations going here. It's definitely a change from what we were doing earlier. Real bright colors earlier to start the day fish were more aggressive, they were just eating them up. Had to go real subtle, natural right now. Gold and a pro blue paddle tail, pretty much hard to beat that. Very minnow-esque. Fooled you. It's like a conveyor belt of big walleyes. Oh, big fish. I Ooh. watched you. <laughs> I'd get just thrashed. <laughs> Go dome. I don't want to give anybody the impression watching that we're just a bunch of goofballs, but it's really hard to hide right now. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you catch fish like this, just the, the, the silliness comes out in a guy. I think that's probably why I jones for this every year. You know, winter fishing's hard. We put a lot of time and effort and energy into making really good ice fishing happen. And uh, this is the other side of that. This is come out, throw down the eye pilot, click a button, and just proceed to catch the heck out of the fish. Double! Double Ruski. You got a little guy? <laughs> he didn't look like a giant, but he's good. Uh, this place is the Mississippi River times yeah. 10. He got off! Uh, you know what? I think every father or mother owes it to their children. If the children like to fish, you got to bring them here. This is not big boat territory either. I'd be comfortable coming out here in a 14 foot flat bottom boat. One, well, where's your fish, Chris? Um, jumped out of my hand. Did it? At the last second. I, I understand was, how it's hard to hold on to those little ones. I was hoping to compare them, but next time. We have these fish dialed and profiled. Big fish. That was a sharp, sharp hit. Mine too. And we've got two good ones here. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at your fish. Yeah, that's a 10 pounder. All right, buddy, I'm gonna do them both. <laughs> I haven't even seen mine yet. <laughs> oh, there's mine. All right. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> come on home, baby. Three, two, one. Right. She's God. ours. Yeah. We own her. <laughs> we own it. Hello. Yeah. Oh, that's 20 pounds of walleye right there, buddy. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is just crazy. That one's out. Okay, you're loose. Got him. Thanks, sir. There is absolutely nothing left to show or share <laughs> regarding this bite. 
I can honestly say I've never had two walleyes this size in the net before. <laughs> Just absolute giants. You know what, guys? You've seen a lot of big fish today, and this is something that any angler can do. This is not that remote fly-in trip or a technique that you have to be some kind of fishing wizard to be able to do. Anybody can do this, and it happens every year here on the Rainy River. Early April's my favorite. You're one of my favorite guys to fish it with. You know, from both of us, Chris Grandrud and I, thanks for watching. We're gonna see you next week. <laughs> you two. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Ready? Yep. Boom. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.